Hi guys and welcome back to Switch Up. My name's Mark Walker. Some of you asked for it, so here it is. This is my review of GRI, I can't remember how to say it, on Nintendo Switch. Sometimes you just want to lavish superlatives over a game to justify the scores you're giving. You feel the need to decorate it with your words to convey an emotional response it's given you. GRI does all that within about 30 seconds of starting the game. It doesn't just rest on its beautiful aesthetic or mesmeric music. Instead, it continues to build its narrative and some simple yet relatively engaging puzzles and encounters purvey. But is there depth below the beautiful exterior? Let's find out. The game begins with your protagonist singing a beautiful song. It's unclear whether she is supposed to be a metaphor for nature or some other force that holds the world together, however she soon loses her ability to sing and with it the world begins to crumble around her. It felt like she was holding everything together and the loss of her voice unbalanced the equilibrium. Undoubtedly this is the story of a girl who is dealing with some extreme difficulty in life and as such has retreated to this inner world where the metaphorical journey to reclaim her voice and restore colour could represent a struggle to regain control of her life. You meet some minor characters along the way but the theme persists of helping them overcome obstacles. There is a delightfully playful design to these and your interactions resemble a child's game. Narrative is also told through the environment, particularly the ancient architecture in one step and the lush forest in the next. This world feels full of life, or at least the memory of life, despite being almost entirely devoid of any. Story scores 16 out of 20. There have been a few experiential games on Switch, most recently the excellent Abzu, which I loved, and Glenn, not so much. Gri takes a simple control scheme such that you run by default, can jump with B, and that's essentially it. Holding up on the left stick will allow you to go up a slope when presented with the option. Collecting these glowing stars is essential for creating constellation style bridges. The number required is identified on screen. Now there are these gates almost throughout the game where the progression stops and you're required to collect a couple of these and you get the choice to head off in either one of two or three directions. Later in the game you gain new abilities such as turning into a solid heavy block which enables the destruction of certain environmental elements. The puzzle platforming is quite intuitive and the game uses a very accurate physical rendering technique for these. Objects react accordingly to the accelerated force applied. I chuckled when I unlocked the double jump. Glenn has a real issue with platformers without one. It's an interesting application here as it does allow a second jump up regardless of whether you're in free fall. This creates new ways of traversing and special puzzles that would be otherwise impossible. Maybe this is a reference to what every child thinks, that if you're falling while stood on an object, if you jump again, you would land without damage. Or I'm just reading too much into it, who knows, it's been a long week. Much of the game you are simply moving from A to B, but you will have noticed a distinct lack of colours from the world, bar the vibrant hair of the girl herself. At certain checkpoints you will rediscover one of these colours and as they flood back into the game they tend to change the atmosphere but also sometimes the gameplay. Early on you discover the red colour which fills the world and everything shifts. A sandstorm whips up and you're forced to seek shelter before dashing to the next. While this was initially very cool, it felt tedious quite quickly. The distances between each shelter were a little too contrived, making me feel like a pawn in a story out of my control during these moments. Thankfully, you soon learn the ability to essentially fight back against these torrents of wind and stop them entirely, and I understand the symbolism is important to the story, but please, not at the expense of enjoyment if possible. 
Now as you slip and slide down huge dunes and towers, you can't help but appreciate the feeling of freedom and escapism provided. Unlike a purely experience-driven game, you will be challenged to a few lateral thinking puzzles and the developers have used some nice, small touches to give them real heart. There are collectibles here in the form of these larger glowing orbs and at the end of the level these are shown in the hub area. Nothing particularly rewarding other than a visual reminder that they were discovered. Some platforms are denoted with a white edge, meaning you can walk on them and while this worked for the most part, I did find myself falling through some that I felt I should have been able to land on, leading to a frustrating climb back up. It may seem minor but it happened enough to make me think that perhaps they need time to refine it a touch. I loved the way the world reacted to the player for the most part, sometimes affecting the gameplay like platforms rising up to meet you but others just an aesthetic movement of a background object to make you feel like a physical presence within the world. My overall takeaway from the 4-5 to five hour long gameplay is a game that is hugely relaxing, beautiful and sometimes a little challenging but mostly not. I'm glad they put in a reason to leave the beaten path but a map wouldn't go amiss and while we were at it what about a quantity of collectibles still remaining and or found? I enjoyed the puzzles and platforms, they just became a touch repetitive. Now despite the game having no real threat of death, there are also some boss fights if you want to call them that or they're more like boss experiences at the end of each level. They carried an ominous feeling to them and the way that the enemies move around is really quite unnerving. The lovely world and simple gameplay is an enjoyable, albeit shorter adventure that is heightened by the next area we need to look at and that's visuals and audio. Gameplay scores 14 out of 20. The world of Gree is simply breathtaking. This is unsurprising when you consider that the artist is the notable illustrator Conrad Rosette. Vistas are accompanied by some truly wonderful use of colour. When you discover a new one of these, the way it bleeds into the world most obviously resembles a watercolour painting. To say this alone doesn't do justice to the visual and audio combined though. Take a look for yourself. The game ties audio and on-screen visuals like few other titles. When wading through a sea of red sand, you find yourself caught up in a storm. The shift in audio style to match the on-screen peril is excellent. Despite your character being at no real risk from a gameplay standpoint, some of the most stunning scenes are from very early in the game. The artist's work is incredibly impressive and each frame of animation lovingly crafted. I enjoyed the architecture and in these moments the visuals resemble the drawings of the great masters like Michelangelo while also giving a hint of Escher. I guess one of the best things about visuals are the sense of scale they create throughout your journey. These huge hands jut from the forlorn earth reminding me of an early Planet of the Apes scene and the small creatures that move and scuttle are both unusual and endearing. I mentioned that you meet certain inhabitants on your journey and I particularly loved the terrifying spider crabs that take a rock as their shell and carry you on to your next locale. Finally, visuals portray an ebb and flow of speed more akin to faster platforming titles like Sonic. There are times you're swept along and can jump and fling yourself in the air, not for any benefit, but just because you can. While slower, darker times will give you a sense of claustrophobia. Musically, the Berlinist has created an original score that serves to underpin every action you take and every moment of your time within the game. Along with visuals, it is the strongest element of this one. I think one final point I need to mention is the level of detail happening in the backgrounds. 
If you look, there's normally one or two layers of parallax scrolling, but I think I counted five or six layers of scrolling, whereby the background moves at varying speeds to create a sense of three dimensions. Overall then, visuals are stunning in every sense of the word, and they score 20 out of 20. And audio is equally impressive, but not the masterpiece that I believe visuals to be, and they score 19 out of 20. The experience is definitely a worthwhile one, and it costs £14.49, €16.99, or $16.99. While I would have liked more difficult puzzles, I'm guessing this may have hindered the flow of the game. I enjoyed the platforming sections the most when the levels diverged and let you choose your own path for a while. The game then is at its best. You'll find around 4 to 5 hours of playtime here, so not the longest but also a decent enough length for this type of experience. Regardless of collectibles however, the game does tend to overlook the incentivization of these in any meaningful way, and as such, you aren't overly likely to be replaying this experience over and over. Value scores 13 out of 20. Gree is a beautifully told and emotional journey that at times frustrates in its simplicity and linearity, and at others makes you smile with sheer freedom and escapism. It scores a switch-up score of 82%. Thank you so much to the developer. Check out these other videos for more of the switch-up content, and for all things switch all the time, keep it switch-up. Cheers guys, see ya!